Hi, my name is Kiru, and today we're going to talk about trauma-sensitive meditation. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about what we mean when we say the word trauma. We also are going to define trauma-sensitive mindful meditation, and then we're going to talk about the benefits of mindfulness for trauma recovery. So trauma, what is it? According to the Canadian Mental Health Association, trauma is a lasting emotional response that often results from living through a distressing event. Experiencing a traumatic event can harm a person's sense of safety, sense of self, and ability to regulate emotions and navigate relationships. Long after the traumatic event occurs, people with trauma can often feel shame, helplessness, powerlessness, and intense fear. So trauma can happen in early life, and again, it can include abuse, neglect, problematic attachments, or lack of attachments with caregivers and parents at an early age, whereas trauma in later in life can be domestic violence, sexual assault, surviving war, car accidents, living through a car accident, or living through a natural disaster and unexpected uh, loss. So some facts about trauma is that it happen even when it happens later in life, it leaves individuals feeling like they are out of control. And this is what has a lasting impact. And the symptoms often last a long time until we address it and learn to manage them. So what happens when trauma goes untreated? So people who experience trauma also live with traumatic memories of the traumatic event. If these memories do not go away, then trauma survivors start ruminating on these memories and they can develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Under resolved trauma, regardless if it is the case of PTSD or not, can prevent against severe developmental and life challenges for survivors of trauma. Unresolved trauma can make it very difficult for a person to be regulated or learn how to re-regulate their emotions. It's difficult for them to maintain healthy relationships, but it's also difficult for them to have a healthy lifestyle. Unresolved trauma leads to severe health issues and can disrupt the ability for people to work and function in daily life. So how do we treat trauma? So some common approaches to trauma and uh, therapy include cognitive behavioral therapy, also known as CBT, psychodynamic therapy, and this is something that will help you with your relationship, sensory motor therapy, eye movement and desensitization reprocessing, which is MDR, and pharmacolog pharmacological treatment. It is beneficial if the trauma treatment is trauma-informed and intersectional. This means that trauma treatments must cater to the specific needs of a client. Trauma therapy must be validating and it must not be ju um, judgmental. The best trauma-informed intersectional treatments are those that help survivors of trauma understand their symptoms of trauma and help them cope. They also under, uh, best the best trauma treatments also understand that trauma survivors usually use their symptom usually respond to their symptoms with maladaptive coping mechanisms and they're developed over time and this is how they survive and it's important not to judge their coping mechanisms. Um, often survivors of unresolved trauma use maladaptive coping mechanisms to withstand over, overwhelming life experiences. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about what I think is a very helpful uh, form of recovery um, tool or plan for trauma survivors. And I think that is trauma sensitive mindfulness. So what is it? So it's considered beneficial for trauma survivors and it's adapted to the unique needs of trauma survivors. The goal of trauma-sensitive mindfulness is to learn to be comfortable with the physical sensations of trauma and learn how to emotionally regulate, to cultivate a sense of present, presence in our day-to-day -day activities, to feel a sense of ease in relation to our experiences of trauma, and just to be aware that even though we've been traumatized, we can experience life and be in the present and actually enjoy life and be curious about it. So some important statistics um, that we should keep in mind when we consider starting a practice of trauma-sensitive mindfulness is that it's all a clinically considered a promising practice for survivors of intimate, intimate partner violence and other forms of interpersonal violence. This is because it promotes resilience among women, women veterans. It also helps relieve chronic pain. It improves physical and psychosocial well-being in general. 
So how does trauma-sensitive mindfulness work? So it requires collaboration with a trauma-informed mindfulness teacher who will help create a safe and comfortable and supportive environment to practice meditation and mindfulness. The mindfulness is often trauma-informed and the practitioner will help you find a place in your body that feels safe for you so you can focus on it. Sometimes this includes focusing on sensations in your body or focusing on your feet. Um, for some people who experience trauma, uh, focusing on sensations of, of your body might be difficult, but it's key because often we store our memories and feelings of trauma in our bodies. Um, and because these memories and feelings are there, we kind of dissociate and feel disconnected from our bodies in order to protect ourselves from these memories. In order to help trauma survivors feel safe in their bodies, trauma informed mindfulness teaches practitioners how to ground, anchor, and self regulate so they can be aware of their bodies. The more you are aware of their body, the more centered you feel, and the more you can feel in control and present in your everyday life. So how does it work? So it's like performing a physical activity with awareness. Again, it's about, you can observe objects, colors, or space around you. Um, also listening to attentive music is also considered trauma-informed mindfulness. Um, sometimes focusing on an object like a flame of a candle or something that is static in a room and like focusing on that and allowing yourself to be present in the moment in the focus of that is a better way to deal with trauma symptoms because for some people focusing on the body might be so overwhelming and dysregulating so often trauma informed mindfulness practitioners start with objects or colors in the room or even allow um, clients to listen to music that is soothing and in that way um, teach them how to slowly cultivate a sense of presence in everything that they do so how do you get started if you want to learn how to resolve trauma with trauma-sensitive mindfulness? So it's important to find a good therapist and with their help find a trauma-informed um, mindfulness teacher. Sometimes therapists can also be trauma-informed mindfulness teachers, but that's not always the case. And sometimes you might want something different. You might want to have a separate therapist and to have a separate um, trauma-informed mindfulness teacher. So it's all up to the client. It's important to also find a safe space to practice mindfulness. Uh, once you do that, it's important to, as you're practicing mindfulness, to keep track of your um, triggers and record them. Um, is, um, also, it's important to keep objects or visuals around. So like if you choose to not focus on your body and when you're practicing mindfulness, it's important to keep the object, the image or the color or the thing that you have started my, uh, meditating on um, around you so you can travel with it, take it somewhere. Um, you can do it at work, at lunch. Um, you can do it in your home, at a friend's house, in your car even. Um, it helps. It, it's important that you use this, these objects and let, make sure that they help you soothe you in moments of distress. It's also important to create a home practice. Often clients also, if they feel like they can't do it all the time on their own, it's helpful to find virtual mindfulness applications that can help you um, practice mindfulness at home. I hope this has been an informative presentation. I encourage everyone to try it. Um, it's worked for me and I hope it works for you.